plan, uh, development has made a big, big emphasis on schooling. Uh, people thought for many years that uh, if we increased schooling and, and uh, participation rates in schools and graduation rates, uh, we would essentially transform societies from poor societies to rich societies. Uh, what does the data say? Well, it's interesting because I think we started off talking about education and then we alighted into talking about schooling as development people. We reduced the goal to schooling. There's an interesting thing about English is that in English, if you say you got schooled, it's a bad thing. <laughs> if you go into a one-on-one -on -one basketball game with uh, your friend and you get completely destroyed, you say, I got schooled. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the nature of much schooling in the developing world was of that type. Kids got schooled. They didn't really get educated. So we've recently done a study that of women around the world, and maybe we'll, uh, that shows that of women who completed six years of education, got up, went to schooling 200 days a year, six years of their life, only half of them could read a simple five-word sentence. Five words, farming is hard work, children study at school, simple sentences, which means we have yet to see if we can realize the true promises of education because so far what we have mainly done is schooling and schooling in massive numbers. So we now in some sense have the potential. The average adult in Haiti today has more years of schooling than the average adult had in France in 1975. Hmm. So there is no longer really any excuse from the lack of schooling opportunities that countries aren't in a much better place. The problem is, is that way too much emphasis got on schooling and not nearly enough on education. And so the real learning acquired in many of these schools has been truly abysmal. And I think the focus needs to shift unbelievably onto how much are children actually acquiring capabilities while they're in school. But uh, there is evidence, and I think you have contributed massively to it, that shows that these people that are poor in their home country, when they go to another country, apparently uh, their, their schooling, however lousy it was, uh, allows them to earn much, much more, much higher income. So are we attributing to low quality schooling something that might be education, but not something that could have been provided by a school? Uh, uh, or, or why, why is it that they seem to be able to uh, be perfectly productive in another place, uh, but if, you, if they stay at home, they're not? I think there's two different features going on. One is you can actually try and say, how many equivalent years of schooling does a person have? So when a person moves from Guatemala to the U.S., you do see that their wage goes up way higher because just everything is more productive in the U.S., but it doesn't go to exactly the person with the same number of years of schooling as in the U.S. So we've, there have been studies done that try and say, is six years of schooling really worth six years of schooling in the U.S.? And it's really not because I think they learn less. But the second and really complex issue is, you know, productivity is a feature of places. And a lot of what's happened is not only have we schooled people that haven't necessarily learned a lot, but those that have learned a lot aren't necessarily focused on highly productive tasks. So one simple way of putting it is, it is in the old Soviet system, you could educate a commissar, but it wasn't clear having a more educated commissar was good for everyone else because okay. they were devoting themselves to resource, to things that weren't necessarily productive. So I think a lot of what happened is in closed political and economic systems within developing countries, even the education that led to learning didn't necessarily say, what's the best use of my learning at enhancing the productivity of the country? Often, um, rent-seeking or you know, piracy, as it Douglas North puts it, was a very rewarding activity. A pirate is actually a very educated individual. He needs to know tides, he needs to know boatcraft, he needs to know weaponry, he needs to know trade routes. It's not that ed pirates are uneducated, it's that pirates are educated but devote their acquired education to things that actually detract from the overall productivity of others. And I think the combination of low levels of schooling 
leading to low levels of education, combined with often the high levels of education being devoted to piracy that lowers everybody's productivity, can explain that puzzle. That was interesting. Thank you very much, Lance.